Hey guys, my name is Vishal and I welcome you all to this session by Edureka. In today's session, we would be talking about Azure boards, which is very important when you look at it from DevOps perspective, especially on the Azure platform. But before we actually do go ahead and understand what Azure boards exactly is, let us take a look at the offerings of today's session first. So as far as today's session goes, we would start by understanding what is Azure DevOps. Then we would take a look at some of its components. Moving further, we would get into the main topic of discussion and we would understand what is Azure Boots, what are some of its components, and finally, I would finish things off with the demo part where I would give you a walkthrough to Azure Boots. So let's not waste any time and quickly get started then. So the first topic of discussion is what is Azure DevOps? Now, if you've attended my previous sessions, I've talked about Azure, I've talked about DevOps, and I've talked about quite a few other terms that surround these terminologies. So I'm going to be very quick and I'm going to give you a quick introduction to what Azure is, what DevOps is, and then we would quickly move into the main topic of discussion. So let us first try and understand what is Azure and then we would move towards DevOps. Now Azure is a popular cloud vendor in the market. If you take a look at the market stats, uh, it is one of the best cloud vendors or cloud service providers and it provides you with various services like computation, storage, database, application development, PaaS, IAS and all these kind of services. Now for people who are completely new, this might sound a little vague. Let me simplify this particular definition or let me simplify how cloud platforms and Azure works. Well, to give you an example, take a look at this analogy. We all use electricity at our home. So what we do is we probably switch on the bulbs. We probably switch on the switches or buttons and the corresponding appliance starts working, right? Whether it's a television, whether it's AC, what happens here is we are probably consuming some amount of electricity and probably at the end of the month we pay a bill for the electricity that we have consumed, right? So this is how cloud computing also works. Let me tell you how. Now what we are doing is we are paying bill for the electricity at the end of the month. So all our concern is to take a note of how many units have we consumed and how much bill is to be paid, right? I mean, do we ever worry about where does this electricity come from? Who produces it for us? who maintains it and in case if there is an outage who takes care of it even if we do know about it that is not our concern because the vendor or the electricity provider takes care of all these things and at the end of the month they say that okay you've used these many services or units of electricity pay the bill for it if we can do computing in this format well i would call it as cloud computing i mean when you talk about cloud computing what it does is it provides you with various computation and all the services that are needed for hosting and developing softwares so that organizations can run smoothly. And why is it similar to this approach of electricity? Well, basically what cloud computing or these cloud vendors do is they provide you all these resources that are needed for building and deploying and maintaining your applications on rental basis. That means you can use these services for the time duration you want them to use for or the time duration for which you want to use them and you would actually be charged only for the units that you've consumed. So yeah, that is what Azure is. It is a cloud vendor and it provides you with all these computing storage and database kind of services and there are n number of other services that basically assist you in this particular approach or in this particular process. DevOps now it is an approach that basically brings in the developers and the operators team together. I mean what they do is they probably introduce continuous integration and deployment. When I say continuous integration and deployment, that means it is an approach in which a software while it is being built it gets continuously tested it gets continuously built and it gets continuously deployed so that these two teams that is the developers and the operations team can work together and thus it helps save a lot of time and helps reduce the resources that you should use in order to build or develop a particular software so what is azure devops now we've understood what azure is we've understood what devops is so the fact that DevOps is so popular these days and so is Azure. What if we could actually go ahead and implement DevOps or carry out DevOps practices on top of Azure platform? Wouldn't that be nice? So what Azure does is it basically provides you with various services that actually lets you go ahead and implement DevOps approach on top of this particular cloud platform. In case if you are interested in knowing about DevOps in little more detail or Azure in little more detail. I probably would be sharing a link with you people. You can check that link in the description below and you can actually understand how Azure DevOps actually works together in a little more detail. But as far as this topic is concerned, we are not here to discuss this particular topic in detail. So let us quickly move further and try to take a look at some of the components that concern this particular topic. 
So these are the components of Azure DevOps. I mean, you have Azure boards, you have Azure artifacts, Azure pipelines, Azure repos, Azure test plans. Now, basically, these are different services that kind of let you carry out certain practices that concern DevOps. If you're interested or if you wish to create pipelines in which your products would be built, tested and deployed, you need Azure pipelines. Azure artifacts let you keep track of all the artifacts that you're actually going to go ahead and use in your DevOps approach. Azure repos is similar to GitHub where you can actually go ahead and have your in-house repository or in-house orchestration where you can actually go ahead and put in your repositories, commit them, pull them, basically branch them and do a number of things with them. Test plans as the name suggests, it gives you plans using which you can actually go ahead and carry out the testing process when you talk about Azure DevOps in particular. Azure boards, this is something that we are going to discuss in little more detail today. So Azure boards, think of it as a one place that basically unifies all these services or brings in all these services together. It is more of a dashboard that basically lets you keep track of all the activities that you do in this process. So whether it's about building your applications, deploying them, testing them, kind of importing your repositories, all these things can be managed on a single platform or on a single page so that it creates simplicity. I mean, if you have a team of maybe 25 people, if all of them can interact with all these services on one single page, on one single dashboard, that would be really good. And that is what Azure DevOps exactly does. It is not just a medium which brings in all these things together. It does a lot more. So as we move further, we would be discussing that as well. But for now, that is what the definition says or that is what I would define it as by saying that it is a place where you bring in all these services together. So let us move further and try to understand something else. So what are the components of Azure boards in particular? So guys, these are the terms that we would be more concerned about as we move further into the demo part. So let us try to understand these one by one. Calling them components, I'm not sure how right an approach that is. But yeah, these are more of the terminologies that concern Azure boards. Now, I've already mentioned that it is a page that brings in all the services together. So basically what it does is it lets you keep track of all the activities that are happening. So whether there are certain work items that you're dealing with, whether you're dealing with certain issues, certain tasks, whether you're talking about different views in which you wish to view all the data that is there, whether you're keeping track of all the repositories that are there, whether you're keeping track of all the sprints, if you wish to take a note of what happens in a particular sprint, or if you have certain queries that you wish to throw into so that you can understand your process or you're working much better. In that case, you have your Azure boards basically, which lets you take care of all these activities. So what are these terms and what do they do exactly? Let's try to understand those. Now, as I've already mentioned, each artifact that would go on your Azure board, I mean, whether it's an issue, whether it's a task, whatever it is, it comes under a particular classification. I mean, I want to make note of that particular artifact in the form of some entity. So that entity is my work item as in what your work is being done, what your action is being done on this particular item that can be taken note of by using this particular thing. Work item is nothing but basically creating a simple tab in which you keep track of everything. Okay, if I have a particular issue, say for example, I have some issue with committing a change to a particular repository. In that case, I can create a work item or an issue saying that, okay, this is the stuff that I'm working on or this is the stuff that I need to keep note of. So this basically is a work item. Boards, now again, if you have a particular project that you're working on, now that project would have its self-defined board. In this case, you can think of it as a Kanban board basically, which is very popular and it comes uh, self-integrated with every project that you work on, on Azure boards specifically. Backlogs. Yes, the fact that you are working on sprints. I mean, let me simplify this a little more for you. Basically, Azure Boards also lets you keep track or lets you perform sprint management and agile development and management as well. That means you would be working on software development in different phases. So you would be working in different sprints, right? So there might be a possibility that you are working on a particular software or developing a particular software in that case you would be having certain backlogs, certain issues that need resolving. So in order to keep a track of it, in order to keep an order in the flow of your software development, you can always have backlogs which let you backtrack and keep track of what has happened and what has not. So for that you have backlogs. Queries, we've already discussed that. I mean, you can always throw in queries to understand what is happening on your dashboard or on your board. 
sprints i believe we have fair bit of idea about that as well when you talk about dashboards yes as i've already mentioned you have a separate board azure ensures that you get that simplicity i mean you get everything on one simple page so as we move into the demo part probably we would be understanding these topics in a little more detail so let us quickly just do one thing that let us quickly switch into the azure boards and let us get started with the demo part so that probably these terms make a lot more sense to you people so guys what i've done is i've gone ahead and i've switched into my azure portal technically i haven't switched into my azure portal azure portal is a one time place or a single place where you can actually go ahead and implement or carry out all the azure practices so that happens with most of the cloud platforms that are there in the market so in case if you wish to practice azure all you have to do is go and search for azure portal or free tier for azure and you would be directed to a page where you can create a free tier account on microsoft azure you'd be expected to enter your credit card or debit card details this is because these services have an upper limit or a cap on top of that so that you cannot exceed those limits because if you do exceed those limits then microsoft azure would charge you and that is why they need your credit card or debit card details but if you are a beginner and you wish to practice do not worry these resources are more than enough for you to practice so i would suggest that you actually go ahead and create a free tier account okay one more important point once you create that free tier account you have certain credits which are somewhere around 200 dollars if i'm not wrong 200 us dollars and if you are from india the fact that i am conducting this session in india i have a credit if i create a free tier account i have a credit of somewhere around 12 to 13000 indian rupees which is more than enough if i'm not wrong for the practice sake and you have a validity of 1 month to practice these services for free once you exceed the 1 month part your account would be deactivated or you won't be given access to the services if you wish to have an access to these services you would have to probably sign up to some plan that they have but meanwhile you can use these resources for free for a month actually so with aws it is for one year with azure it is for one month if i'm not wrong so once you do have that free tier limit with you you can visit this particular link as you can see on the screen you can actually go ahead and search for this particular screen and once you do that guys probably you can actually go ahead and come to this page where you can start free with the boards so let us see how can we get started with this particular service so click on start boards it would ask you as in do you wish to continue just say yes it is an azure devops service basically so it would ask you for the name of the organization i mean you have a structured approach here where you would be having an organization under which you would be having projects so let us call it say azure boards guys i'm giving a random name because most of the names are taken azure boards 1 2 3 4 5 continue okay i just backtracked accidentally let's say azure boards sample 1 2 3 4 5 and i say continue so it creates an organization and it redirects you there and then it says that actually go ahead and create a project so i'm going to say demo project for this session and i'm going to keep it public because i wish to add certain users so let's just keep it public for now because if i create a private account i would have to look into access rights for the users that i'm creating and there you go your project is created so you can go through this welcome guide if you want i'm going to skip it for now so guys this is how the interface looks like and as you can see i've mentioned that you can take a look at the backlogs if you've created which i haven't in this case you can create issues if you want you can do that as well you have an option of epics issues which lets you basically keep track of all the stuff that you're doing you have certain work items that you can add if you want to here boards what boards are you using backlogs you can keep track of all the backlogs that you do sprints and queries so if you just come to boards and then you say add a new item let's say sample item there you go so guys you can see that it comes with these two options you have a particular state here so for now it says to do what do you wish to do it is that phase okay so you can actually go ahead and change the state as well saying once you do change the state it moves to the next part as you can see here so if you are working on a particular action and you've actually moving from one state to the other you can always make changes to that and probably you'd know that okay what state is the work item into what state is the issue into so if i click on this thing it would probably go back again as you can see you can add tasks here saying that okay this is a particular sub task or a task that needs to be done say for example clear cache and there you go cache has been added if i am done with this particular task say for example i move into doing 
space and I clear this task and I say I am done with it. There you go. As you can see the color here has changed indicating that the flow is correct and my task has been completed. So you can keep track of all the resources that you're using here. You can actually go ahead and add users. You can do a lot of stuff that is there with these projects. So come here and take a look at the overview. You can suppose if you name it say sample for today maybe. Guys I'm gonna go very random with this session. I mean whatever I feel is worth telling I'm gonna go ahead and share that with you. I hope that flow is fine with you people. So there you go. Let's see if we can add a user from here. If not we'll create a user from somewhere. Okay, so a user was added here one user is added and assigned an access level to user and you can view the status here as well It says for now it has failed because probably I do not have the License to actually go ahead and assign users, but you can actually go ahead and assign users as well So that depends upon the access rights that you have once you do that you can actually go ahead and do a lot of stuff You can just come here probably you can Visit your dashboards and the demo projects that you are creating Maybe go to boards once you do that you can come here and add backlogs as well Suppose I have an item here, which is this Now so let's add a new item Take a look at this issue and say add to top there you go I can come and assign it to a particular user Let's say I assign it to this particular individual and there you go the person can actually go ahead and make change to the issue you can see the update is here and if it is done it's gonna go to green again and if i come back to my boards you can see that it is here work items again if i actually go ahead and move it to the other state that won't be a problem it would again go to the green part so this is how it works you can actually go to the project settings as well you can come here you can do a lot of stuff here say for example you can manage your teams take a look at the security principles that are there you can Test. Let's not get into the test part for now, but let's say if you wish to have github connections You can connect to your github account as well. Just come here and probably okay, So you can just go ahead my github account is already added I believe here so it shows that thing to me else you'd require to sign up as well So you can just say save and the repository gets added here, so you can actually go ahead and Move to the repos part as well and take a look at the stuff that has happened here Say for example, let me switch to some other account that I have. This is the one or maybe Eureka boards. So if I go to samples, there was something I was wanting to tell you. Yeah, this is the part. So you can enable your repos as well if you want. Okay, you can enable your pipelines, even artifacts. You can see that all these things are available here as well now because I've actually gone ahead and enabled those things. If you just enable these things, you can have access to these resources here and here so if you have any files or stuff you can actually go ahead and check if there is anything that is there in your repos or in your other services and you can clone those you can make changes to those services that you've used you can commit certain changes to the code that is there say for example you have some index files or some basic codes that are there you can actually go ahead and edit those changes once you've actually edited those changes you can go ahead and commit those you can create branches as well so uh, you have your master branch you have your sub branch and you can make changes and commit those changes to the master as well So when you talk about DevOps operations and various activities that concern a particular board Everything can be taken care of when you talk about Azure boards in particular So this is it guys there is not a lot to explore when you talk about these services These are very important to use though because they help you keep track of a lot of things I would suggest that you visit Microsoft Azure's documentation as well because there are quite a few other activities that you can do with this particular service some basic activities which are simple But something that are important and can be done as well So as far as you are concerned you can actually go ahead and explore as many services as you want And you can understand what all can you do with Azure boards in particular as far as this session goes guys I just wanted you to get introduced to this particular topic and I believe I've done justice to that and I hope that you've understood this particular topic to some extent where you can take it further and probably enhance your knowledge in this particular domain. So as far as this session goes guys, this is it from my end. If you do have any queries, you can put those in the comment section in the chat box below and we will try and answer those queries as early as possible. Please let me know how you felt about this session or how you wanted this session to be. In that case, you can drop a like if you want and if you have any queries, again you can put those in the chat box. So as far as this session goes guys, I would be resting it here and here.
Thank you. Bye-bye.